Hi, I'm Lev Polyakov at Levpo on Twitter, and I'm here to reveal the esoteric secrets of Sonic the Hedgehog. I create animation, NFT artwork, and uh, run the live stream series Break the Rules at BreakTheRules.tv, where we bring different people together to uh, to get to the bottom of the cultural changes that are going on around us. Max Darrett, who is currently on vacation and has been kind enough to host me on this uh, wonderful channel of his, was a featured guest on one of our recent streams, where we brought up the current state of people stuck in the self-referential bubbles that define their identity. And this is a frequently brought up problem on BTR, with the ultimate question coming down to the nature of freedom and what it means to truly be free. And this is where Sonic the Hedgehog comes in, surprisingly enough. While the Sonic franchise looks deceptively simple on the surface, I believe that things which resonate with a large audience to this day, while others have fallen by the wayside, have way more going on behind the scenes which resonate with our subconscious. And in this video, I'd like to focus on some of the major examples of this, as well as personal experiences I've had, both of which may help guide some of you watching right now towards going on your own path to higher levels of being. Now I've been a Sonic fan for as long as I can remember, and around 2015 I started getting more into meditation and spirituality. The trigger was doing this breathing technique known as the Wim Hof Method, which is thought to naturally release the endogenous hallucinogen, dimethyltryptamine or DMT for short. And this method is in a long line of similar techniques utilized by various groups such as Tibetan monks, the reason for which I will get to towards the end of the video. But for now, let's just say there is a perennial pattern depicted in various traditions I started observing, which led me to see Sonic the Hedgehog's logo as a branch of the exact same pattern, the most obvious of which is the Zoroastrian symbol of the Farvahar, whose earlier use was found in the winged sun by the various ancient Near Eastern cultures. We see the winged disc in both, as well as the lower ribbon. The figure inside the disc is pointing up just like Sonic, and is also holding a ring, which Sonic is known for collecting as we all know. Other patterns observed include the star post markers in the checkerboard pattern, synonymous with Freemasonry. And that same star and ring pattern can be seen in the bumpers, springs, red star rings, and the goalpost. Especially with the latter, it is no coincidence we associate the star and ring with completion, and I will get into this towards the latter part of the video as well. Back to Zoroastrianism, because we are not done unpacking this yet, not by a long shot. Founded by the ancient Persian prophet Zoroaster or Zarathustra, Zoroastrianism emphasized the individual free will in choosing between Asha, meaning in the simplest terms truth and order, or Druj, meaning deceit or falsehood. In this dualistic religion and philosophy, Druj is represented by the destructive entity of Ahriman, or Angra Mainu, in opposition to either Ahura Mazda, the uncreated creator and upholder of said truth, or to the Amesha Spenta, a class of seven divine entities emanating from Ahura Mazda, which represent furthering, strengthening, bounteousness, holiness, etc, etc. So this theme of the seven sages is found in Sumerian, Babylonian, and Hindu mythology as bringers of civilization to a chaotic humanity. And a whole video can be made discussing this, but suffice it to say, the theme of truth and order from chaos and the lie is a universal one, which can be seen in the Sonic franchise as well. First off, hedgehogs themselves were considered sacred in Zoroastrianism, and if you killed a hedgehog, the punishment would be getting whipped no less than a thousand times. One of the reasons for this was that hedgehogs ate pesky insects and snakes that posed a problem for the Iranians, such as when you'd get an infestation of ants. And just what do the majority of badniks, or robots that Dr. Eggman trapped the helpless little animals in, consist of? The very first badnik Sonic encounters is a bug. Adding to this, during the final judgment at the end of days, souls trapped in darkness will be released by Ahura Mazda just as Sonic releases the animals trapped by Dr. Eggman. With the symbolism established, now let's get to the core of what I believe Sonic the Hedgehog is about, specifically in regards to the concept of freedom. First off, while the internet and meme culture turned Sonic into ironic the Hedgehog, the energy of Sonic from his first days on the Mega Drive in Genesis was meant to exude coolness. While what is considered cool varies with the generations and styles, a common unifier is one who is confident and does not seek desperate approval from others as would be the case with snitches, teacher's pests, I mean teacher's pets, but you get the idea, or someone like Tails who started as a simp for Sonic. One other way of looking at this marker of coolness at an even deeper level 
is the state of not being attached to well, attachment or not to be attached to the fruits of your action, which from a karmic standpoint as philosophized on by many gurus and prophets means that while you still live in this world, you realize that all the problems in your life come from the attachment to the fruits your actions bear that keep you stuck to repeating these actions. And in the greater scope, where we to assume reincarnation exists, keep the cycle of birth, death, and rebirth going. In the same way, the small animals trapped inside Eggman's robots represent us at our most vulnerable level, where we are roboticized through the social engineering of social media to give one example, and detach ourselves to groupthink when we search for a sense of belonging that was earlier provided by our families and communities. But the key difference in this new paradigm of online communities is the addition of seeking validation from people, especially online celebrities, with far less skin in the game towards your well-being than a family in most cases, as well as the hijacking of our dopamine system through notifications keeping us locked in the self-referential hug box and becoming more of an insect hive mind robot than a self-aware human being. It is no wonder why the Bugman meme has arisen to describe a consumption-oriented culture with no higher purpose in life, as they are stuck within the cycles, but so are social engineers like Dr. Eggman. An egghead in the literal sense, or you could say an egomaniacal ego-man who is bent on trapping sentient life into these robotic shells to do his bidding, and has both an appetite for control as well as food, remaining unsatiated until all of life is under his dominion. Eggman and his Eggman Empire is a perfect example of what the Austrian-born spiritualist Rudolf Steiner prophesied in his book, The Incarnation of Ahriman. Remember him from earlier? Steiner believed that humans had to strike a balance between two forces, the Luciferic and Ahrimanic. Now, Luciferic in this context does not mean Satan, rather it implies the fantastical escapism from tangible, mundane reality, which taken to its extreme result in one being carried away by one's fantasies into the realm of baseless hallucination. And yes, you could say that video games in general have this Luciferian quality. Now, as far as the Aramonic, Steiner has the following to say, quote, Now, in contrast, think of everything that presses down upon the earth that makes us dull and philistine, leading us to develop materialistic attitudes, penetrating us with a dry intellect, and so on. There you have a picture of our harmonic powers. From the end of the 19th century to the early 20th, Steiner was not alone in his critique of the roboticization of humanity following the Industrial Revolution, but went further spiritually speaking, in envisioning stone or spider-like beings which would dominate the earth with information. In a materialist industrial system wherein our subjectivity as spiritual beings is darkened, sinking us deeper and deeper into the proverbial full luxury automated bugman pod. Now don't get me wrong. It is with the rise of the scientific method that we have been able to look outwards like never before, move faster, fly higher than ever in recorded history, much as the various crafts devised by Dr. Eggman put any flicky to shame, though at the same time this was accompanied by reductionism to the purely physical, draining the observable universe of its spiritual significance, and reducing said poor flicky to nothing more than a grouping of cells and firing neurons, and in Eggman's case, an energy source for his robots. In order to counter this aramonic influence and release the souls trapped in darkness, it helps to start from your own soul, which I guarantee is full of darkness just like uh, mine and just like anybody who's listening to this is to a certain extent. For one thing, it requires the quieting of the mind that I alluded to at the start of the video. But wait a minute, love, you might be thinking. Sonic's thing is running, and in physics, the faster particles move, the hotter it gets. Wouldn't Big the Cat be a better example of stillness? Well, while Big has a Buddhist and Taoist streak of his own, the sonic hot-cool paradox is justified, and I will explain why and put the aforementioned pieces of the symbolism all together as well. One of the first things to happen to me from meditating and doing the Wim Hof method was what people refer to as the third eye opening in quite a literal way, where in a dark setting there was now a shining light in the center of my vision that took the shape of a cross or a star, sometimes other shapes emanating from the center as well. From here, it was like a layer of unfamiliarity was lifted when I observed the patterns of not just nature, but the media we consume, like this burst of energy at the center was at the core of all creation. If you recall the symbolism of the five-pointed star and circle in Sonic, including that of being the end goal of a Sonic level, as well as the winged disc seen in so many cultures, I would argue that this recurring symbol is both the origin point of all existence and the symbol of completion. The structure showing the process of spiritual completion can be seen in what is referred to as the Tree of Life. 
This may be the case for the ancient Sumerian Tree of Life with her old friend at the top. Relatively newer schematics include the Kabbalistic Tree of Life, which can be traced back to medieval mystical Judaism and its Masonic incarnation, featuring the aforementioned star post markers in the form of the Columns of Severity and Mercy, and the checkered board floor that, just like the columns, imply the union of opposites which form our reality, as well as the unity point of completion at the top. These columns symbolize two extremes, which must be balanced as you go up the tree, and are also seen at the entryway to the Temple of Solomon, which itself may be a representation of the human body, as may have been the Temple at Luxor, as are the aforementioned schematics of the Tree of Life. In this sense, we are fractal representations of consciousness itself, and these schematics point to a union with the creator of existence at the top, through the transmutation of the ego, or the merging of the subject, which is you, with the object, which is everything around you. And on the way to the top, you gotta find a balance between these two aforementioned extremes, and recall Rudolf Steiner was talking about the exact same thing with the Aramonic and Luciferic influences. This is by no means a one-and-done deal, as if we go by the as-above-so-below hermetic principle, all the moments in our life when we make choices can be seen within this framework of how we relate to what is around us, our friends, our family, etc. What helps us in our endeavor is the quieting of the monkey mind that the aforementioned breathing techniques and meditation play an important role in doing. Now what does all this have to do with Sonic? It is during this period of stillness without the loss of awareness, as would accompany sleep, that we observe the highest frequency brainwave activity, or gamma waves, at 31 to 100 Hz, sometimes even higher, as was the case in neuroscientist Dr. Richard Davidson's study of EEG waves emitted by Tibetan meditating monks, finding that some of the monks produced gamma wave activity more powerful and higher amplitude than any documented case in history. So regarding Sonic, it is when we are able to be still and not be moved by our passions that we are able to generate the most energy. And in Sonic's case, this energy is directed towards freeing the helpless from the Aramonic force of control. If we were to look at the etymology for the word Sonic, it comes from the Latin sonus, meaning sound. And what is sound but vibration? And as the genius inventor and visionary Nikola Tesla once said, if you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. Looking at the entomology for Eggman's English name of Dr. Robotnik, Robotnik comes from Rabota, the old church Slavonic word for servitude. And indeed, Dr. Eggman is in perpetual servitude to his intellect, which inflates his ego as well as his appetite and seeks dominion over others to create his Eggman empire. Sonic, on the other hand, does his duty to protect the weak without attachment. Not even the feminine wiles of Maya, meaning illusion in Sanskrit, or Amy, can trap him. He is free, so is able to generate great speed from the void of creation much like the Hindu deity Shiva, who is also blue by the way, while himself being nothingness, is according to Hindu mythology the generator of the feminine creative energy known as the goddess Shakti, which animates the universe. This creative energy can be symbolized by the ring emanating around the star in my aforementioned vision, Sonic being the star of the game, and the rings he collects symbolizing this very same cyclical energy. So back to Sonic. Even if he's got all this going for him, he is not at his state of completion till you've properly completed the game by collecting all seven Chaos Emeralds. I mentioned earlier that the number seven shows up in the seven sages, which bring order to chaos, and is this not what Sonic and Shadow are able to do with chaos control? Anyway, upon getting all seven Emeralds, Sonic turns into Super Sonic and goes beyond his normal abilities. First off, the convention of Sonic going through giant warp rings to the bonus level, I would equate with entering the dream state, astral plane, or the realm of ideas, whatever you want to call it, where many believe a significant portion of work on oneself can be done. The Tibetan Buddhists even practice dream yoga, and in relation to this, here's a neat easter egg from the first Sonic game where they made their level look like a Tibetan Buddhist mandala, which follows the same framework as the aforementioned vision during meditation, as well as the Hindu Sri Yantra. Second, I would equate the process of obtaining all seven emeralds to the process of kundalini awakening, 
the process in which the aforementioned Shakti energy at the base of your spine is awakened and moves up through your seven chakras or energy centers, specifically through your central nadi or channel through which subtle energy flows. Much like the balance between the two pillars in Freemasonry, there are three nadis, one being hot, the other being cool, and the central one known as the Shishudma nadi being the right nadi for the subtle energy to flow through. And that Wim Hof method which I talked about earlier is one of the ways in which the Shakti energy can be awakened. As I mentioned at the start, this breathing technique may increase the production of endogenous DMT, whose exogenous oral supplementation has been linked with the same aforementioned raising of gamma waves, just as in the case of advanced meditators, and what users describe as a state more real than reality itself. While I'm currently going through this process myself and cannot speak for anyone else, Kundalini feels like a pleasant cool liquid moves up through my spine when I breathe slowly, and it's an ongoing process, which for the dedicated practitioner is supposed to result in Samadhi, or the aforementioned cessation of separateness. Here is the summation of what I discussed with accompanying final thoughts. Number 1. Sonic symbolizes a concentrated expression of the Godhead through detached action for the sake of others. The giving for the sake of giving principle is what I believe is the missing ingredient for lifting one up to the state of higher consciousness, but from my own experience, the physical process of meditation, together with the harnessing of vital life energy through breathing techniques, go hand in hand with this process. Number 2. The sonic title and emblem is an expression of enlightenment to be found in many cultures and practices. Same goes for the various objects found in the sonic game, alluding to the process of the aforementioned path of enlightenment. Number 3. Ironically, while Eggman represents the Aramonic force of materialist technocratic control, it is not Sonic who is the full-on Luciferic force in my opinion. Rather, it is the entire Sonic the Hedgehog video game franchise, or to be fair, video games in general, as they are means of escapism, but even worse, they are coupled together with the dulling aramonic force of you piloting this blue hedgehog through your controller as if you were a small animal trapped in your cybernetic pod pressing the right button combinations to get to the goal. Despite this harsh criticism, the artistry and connection with higher concepts which allows a franchise like Sonic to resonate with our subconscious in the first place gives us a chance to seek it out if we are paying attention. And in a way, Sonic smashing the monitor displays symbolizes this ability to extract transmutative qualities from our escapist entertainment and escape from the ignorance which binds us to suffering. And that's all I gotta say about Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, write a comment below, or better yet, write to me on Twitter at levpo, L-E-V-P-O. And if you want to support the live streaming, go to BreakTheRules.tv, that's where you get the YouTube channel, and uh, give me a subscription. If you really want to support the live stream, become a patron at Patreon.com slash BreakTheRules. There's a lot of great perks. If you want to support my artistic endeavors, go to LevCards.com, buy my NFTs, invest in Lev, it's a solid investment. If you uh, want to support the animation, uh, YouTube.com slash LevPoliakov, check out uh, my animations Only Love. Fantastic Plastic, I have a lot of great ones, and with your help, I'm going to keep doing more animations as well. And uh, once again, a big, big thanks to Max Darrett for making this possible. I'm a real big fan of his work, and uh, thank you so much for watching, and that's pretty much it.